at the end of March when the weather warms and the winds drop, the great buzzer hatch engulfs the southwest lakes of Chew Valley and Blagdon. The trout gorge themselves on these buzzers, putting on the pounds in a feeding frenzy, scooping up the emerging buzzers as they nose to tail across the food abundant waters. It's not just the fish that do well, the buzzers support an abundance of wildlife including these gulls as they swoop and catch the emerging buzzer. Today we're on Chew Valley Lake with Tony Donnelly from Bristol Water Fisheries, targeting their stunning rainbow and brown trout. We'll be using a variety of buzzer setups, including straight nymphing, the washing line, but to start off with because the fish are high in the water, we'll be using emerger patterns, fish within the first few inches of the surface. Tony is fishing with a 10 foot, 6 weight rod, floating line, copolymer leader with a team of buzzers about 5 foot in distance apart.
they're fighting yeah, hard this year, aren't they? Yeah, good scrap. Now we've got the warmer winds. So why do you keep the fish in the water for fish um, It's um, just to reduce the stress on them. Um, as long as you're not touching them with your hands and taking them out of the water, it just reduces the stress and it means you're not removing any of the protective slime. Um, what I always do is I just leave them in the net and they can drop down off your seat, kneel in the bottom of the boat to unhook them. Um, <coughs> the hook's already popped out of this one. Um, so he's in the net. Sometimes you need to... Sometimes you might need to pinch their bottom lip to, to be able to get the um, to get the hook out. I always pinch their bottom lip like that. You don't want to touch them anywhere around the back of the head where the gills are. The heart, the heart and the gills are very close together. A lot of people like to try and grip the fish around the back of the head. That, that's a very bad place to be trying to hold them. So, yeah, see, I always leave it in the net. Pinch its bottom lip if you need to get its mouth open to get the hook out. You barely need to touch it. It's been in the net the whole time, and then it's just a case of simply turning the net inside out, and off they go. There we go. Well, plenty of fish rising, so I think we should get back, back at it. My, my top tip for buzzer fishing is to, to try and work out at which depth the fish are feeding. Um, once you know the depth that they're feeding, you can um, change your, your, your tactics uh, and your, your, your setup slightly to make sure that you, you have more flies fishing at that depth. Uh, today when we were straight line nymphing, the, the fish were deep. It may well have been a, um, a midge tip line, possibly a six foot midge tip line would have helped to get the flies down deeper and it would have got uh, more than one fly fishing down at the depth that we needed to. Um, so again, using three or four flies, pay attention to where in the cast you're catching most consistently and once you know that it might be worth changing your setup slightly using heavier flies if you need to go down or using flies tied on lighter gauge hooks if you need to come up um, but there's, there's, once you know the depth you can then catch more consistently. Fish, yeah, yeah, he's in good order. Fin perfect. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it would be one of this year's one of the stockies from the start of the season. But yeah, nice fish. Pop him back. There we go. No trouble. Well, so what fly seems to be working best today? What we're doing is we're fishing. Um, the fish are right up in the surface, so we're we're using um, a merger flies. Um, casting them and rather than fishing them static we're actually bringing them back as um, soon as they hit the water just start figure of eight and the fish seem to be responding to that so what we've got is we've got two 
um, two black shipman's buzzers and the black muskins in the middle so top dropper and point flies the ship shipman's and mergers um, and then we've got a black uh, muskins in the middle which is like a black pheasant tail with some little white breathers um, and yeah they're coming to all the flies um, they're, they're, they're taking taking both of those so um, yeah what makes buzzer fishing so much fun well um, this this time of year um, and we, we, big buzzer hatches just now the biggest I've seen in the three years that I've been here and the fish are just going they're going absolutely berserk on them um, just well, just seen two fish rise at the same time there just in front of us um, so yeah it's um, it's just it's just the, the amount of activity the fly life and um, the, you know the, the birds are feeding on them the fish are feeding on them and it's all you know it's all happening right in front of you um, and yeah it's just it's non-stop I mean they're, they're trying to cover fish just now is at times you don't know which which way to look or which fish to cast to it's just it's just non-stop at the minute Yeah, wow. Yeah, that was incredible. I actually saw him come up and take that from underneath. There we go. Good, good fit fish that. Be about three pounds. There we go. There we go, let's pop it back. There we go. So far this morning, um, we've been fishing a merger patterns on right up in the surface, and fish have been taken right off the top. But the, the the cloud's gone, the fog's lifted, and the sun's come out. We're not seeing as many fish moving on the surface. We think the fish have gone down a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to try some straight buzzers now, st straight line nymph in. Um, so you've got 16, 16 to 18 foot leader on, flies evenly spaced, sort of six six feet apart along that. What we're going to do is when the sun's out and it's bright, we're going to fish straight nymphs with a heavy glue buzzer on the point to take it all down. If we get a bit of cloud cover and we think there's one or two fish starting to move back up and take flies off the top, we maybe change and put a booby on the point and fish washing line just to keep the flies in the top couple of feet. But at the moment, not nowhere near as many fish moving. Sun's out, bright, so we're going to go down fish deep. Straight line nymphs, um, trying to get them all down to search the, search the, the, the water column. Um, it's 
really just a case of uh, cast out, uh, pull the line tight, and then just keep in touch, barely bringing the line back at all, just, just keeping in touch as the boat drifts down towards the flies. Um, now, the takes at, at the moment are, are confident the fish are pulling the line straight out your hand. Um, but at times they, they might be a bit finicky, especially sort of later on um, as, as we get towards the, 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 the summer time. Um, in which case it's worthwhile watching the, the loop of line between the, the tip of the rod and where it meets the water. Um, you'll, you'll, that'll register takes. If, if you're getting subtle takes, um, you, you can pick them up on that. You'll see the line flick out um, as, as they mouth the fly. Uh, the other thing that's very important um, is at the end of your retrieve, because you, your flies are down um, at different levels of the water column, is as you get towards the end of your retrieve, is you make sure that you hang the flies, slowly bring them up and just feel for any little bumps or knocks. Um, the fish are very responsive to that at the moment. There's a lot of fish, especially the brown trout, being caught on the hang. So just take your time. Don't be in any rush to get those flies out of the water. It might be a case of hanging them for as long as 20, 30 seconds and the fish might still be there and interested in coming and having a look. Yep, another one. That one actually took the top dropper that time on the hank. Yeah, well, we've just, we're just in a little bit shallower water now. Uh, we're just coming onto the shore there, so um, it might be that, yeah, that's why the, the top the top dropper um, is probably down about yeah, eight, eight feet there. So, um, yeah, that's one on the top dropper for a change. Lovely. All right, let's go and do another drift. Big, but a nice fish. Lovely. So there we go, right, hooked right in the top lip on the point flight. There we go, just pop that. I'm getting good, good deep hook holds today. There we go, that's one of our triploid brown trout. Nice bright, bright silver fish. There you go, another leech on him there as well. 
Lovely. Back. actually see that fish has been it's been feeding on the bottom he's rubbed his bottom lip away so a bit of damage on there so you can see he's been grubbing about down deep today we've used two different um, leader materials uh, for fishing in the surface you want to be using copolymer leader material um, it's it can be a little bit tricky when you're fishing droppers with it it's very supple so you, you can find that you get a bit more twist in in, in the droppers and, and the odd tangle um, but it, it it doesn't sink quickly so if you need to keep your flies in the top couple of inches of, of the water which we did first thing today then copolymer was, was definitely the way to go um, it's, it has plenty of stretch in it as well so, so when you're getting those takes right off the top and you're setting the hook straight away um, it, it is quite forgiven, you, you shouldn't get broken off too often. It, it is definitely the, the first choice to go to if you're fishing dries or emergers on the surface. Um, when the sun came out and we went to fish in the, the straight line nymphs, um, we were using fluorocarbon. The fluorocarbon will, will sink quickly, um, helps take everything down. Um, I was using 12 pound today, um, which is maybe a little bit stronger than, than some people would, would choose to fish, but um, I find that when you're fishing three or four flies, uh, the, the, the heavier breakage strains are a bit stiffer, so it helps keep the droppers proud of the, the rest of the line, so you get less tangles. Um, it, it also means at the odd time, if you get two fish on at once, you, you shouldn't lose the whole lot. Um, you, you usually get away with a bit more with using strong fluorocarbon. Also, we stuck with the fluorocarbon when we were using the washing line method. Um, now, the, the, the benefit of using fluorocarbon with the washing line method is, is the, the booby on the point um, is, is a very good attractor for drawing fish in. Um, now, with the fluorocarbon and the nymphs, it, it, it just helps to dig it into the surface. When, when you cast out and the flies land, you're best to give it two sharp pulls um, and that will make the, the booby dig into the surface and it also creates a bit of disturbance that will get the fish's attention. Um, then they're, you know, they're around your flies, you've, you've got their attention then. If they don't come to the booby, they may see the fly above it on the cast and end up taking the nymph, nymphs above it. Yeah, it was about, about five minutes to get that one in there. Yeah, my arm sore. That was that was actually on the the buzzer on the top dropper. And that was on on that fly there. I've got three. I'm fishing three of the same. I've just got three three glue buzzers on. Um, so yeah, he's, he's taking that one. Yeah, nice, nice, nice clean tail, nice bright fish, a leech on him as well there. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> so it's just die, incredible day. Incredible.
Okay, so we know the fish are feeding hard on the buzzards, but we thought we'd give you a little look at um, <coughs> at what's in their stomach. So that's the trout has been spooned, and as you can see, it's absolutely stuffed full of, of buzzards there. Just taking a closer look at the, the buzzards um, from, from one of the fish that we've had, is there, there's some adults in it and, and some pupa as well. Um, it's a size 12 muskins that's that's in in the middle there um so yeah it's uh obviously that fish has, has come on and taken some fly off the top possibly uh last night in the evening when it when it calmed down or first thing this morning um and then the, there's there's pupa in there as well quite a quite a few of the insects that were in its stomach are still alive so it has has been feeding already this this morning There's a <coughs> pod of fish coming past us then. I just think there's three or four in that little area. You put the booby on the uh on the point to, to bring the flies back up. Yeah, that one's just taking that this hook this fish um, using the washing line. So two um, two muskins on the droppers, and then I put a, a black UV booby with yellow eyes on the point. Um, there's more fish moving in the top again now. Um, in the past 20 minutes or so, um, and yeah, that seems to work straight straight away. Quite a big fish, actually. It's quite a good fish, that. It's amazing. He's taken that. Uh, ignored, the, ignored the nymphs and took the took the booby on the point. It's quite a quite a long fish. Get a very good look at it. But it looks fair size. bent in the road. That's amazing that it takes ignores the little ignores the nice nymphs that look like the naturals and takes the black and yeah black and yeah it's a nice fish big tail on it as well actually Doesn't want to come in, does he? No. I'm in a bit, a bit of trouble now because I've got a top top dropper stuck in the in the rod, I think. Do you want me to help you all right? No. Nearly, nearly ready. Yeah, there we go. Oh, nice overwintered fish that, or yeah, it's got silver in the tail, so it's been in in a while. I would say that's probably one from last year. Silver rays in the tail. Stunning, isn't it? Yeah. Nice and well mended fish. I would say that's that's not gone in this year. That that's left over from last year. That 
actually almost got a big enough rest on it. <laughs> there we go, that's a better fish. Probably say about four and a half pounds. I'm pretty certain he's a, he's there from last year because he's, he's he's not lost. He's in good condition. He's not he's not lean, but um, yeah, his tail there. He's got the silver rays in the tail. Um, there's a cracking rainbow. There we go. Let's pop it back. Oh. We had a superb morning session. Um, we've had 12 fish to the boat, including a, a nice silver brownie and a good four and a half pound rainbow. Um, it's it's been the weather has been been challenging today. We we, we thought it, from the forecast that it was going to be. We started out this morning with flat cam conditions. Um, it was cold, um, but the, because the lake was flat cam and we had the, the foggy and overcast conditions, the fish were right up in the surface. Um, well, when we first went out, we were covering moving fish with, with a floating line, copolymer leader and a merger patterns. Um, now, we, we could have fished dry fly or a merger pattern static, but the amount of naturals around meant that the fish had so much choice that I felt that, that moving the flies would get the fish's attention. Um, and that, that proved to be the case. At one point, I'd covered a moving fish and I thought it, it had taken no interest whatsoever. I began stra stri stripping the line back in and, and it bow waved after the flies and I actually managed to hook and land that one. Um, after the first two hours or so, the, the fog lifted and the, the cloud broke up and the sun came out. Um, and I had the feeling that, that that would force the fish deeper again with it being cold at this time of year and the breeze being cold, we felt the fish were going to go deeper. So at that point we went to straight line nymphs, um, fluorocarbon leader, three super glue buzzers to drag it all down um, and, and it, it proved that most of the fish were deep today. The point fly and, and, and the, the dropper above it were the most successful flies. Um, at one point um, towards lunchtime it did settle down for a bit, it, it, the, the surface became a bit more glassy, uh, there was the odd fish moving again so at this point um, we thought they were maybe willing to look up in the water column. Um, so we stuck a booby on the point, uh, kept the nymphs on the droppers and fish washing line. That gives you the opportunity to cast at moving fish and, and try and get their attention with the booby or put the nymphs in front of them. But if there's nothing to cast to, then you can just fish blind um, in the top top two or three feet of the water. And if the fish are looking up, they should be willing to come and chase those flies. So three different methods today, all for buzzer feeding fish. Um, the fish have been feeding well right, right from the off and, and we've had some fantastic sport. Well, that's what buzzer fishing's all about. It's been a very, very productive morning. Um, we've fished for about four, four hours now. Uh, had seven fish to the boat. Um, fish were, were very active ones. Just <laughs> sorry, I'll start again. That was a brownie there. 